I made homemade bacon for the very first time. If you want to see how I did it and how it turned out, keep on watching. Hello everyone and welcome back. So I made my homemade bacon for the first time and this isn't like a spontaneous decision. I've been wanting to make bacon for years. I mean, uh, when I started getting into cooking and smoking foods back in my late teens, uh, I started, you know, I, uh, bacon, making my own bacon was always on my to-do list and I never quite got there. And I'm, what, I'm 45 now, so it's, it's been a long time. And uh, so I finally d d decided during these couple of weeks I've had off during the winter break to go ahead and, uh, and do it, the opportunity came up. I bought a pork belly when I was out shopping for other groceries, brought it home, uh, researched it a little bit and uh, learned how to do it. And I made it and it turned out really good. So, um, but basically I had, to re I had to educate myself a little bit on the curing process because uh, I know there was a couple different styles of curing. Actually, there's a couple, there's actually two primary types of curing. There's uh, the first method, which is um, sort of a quick cure and a hot smoke and there's a much longer lengthy uh, longer cure with a cold smoke process now this video is about the former the first the uh the the, the quick cure method and that involved using um a different blend there's different blends of curing spices out there there's uh well just the generic terms prog powder number one and prog powder number two so if if you're doing what, what i did in this video or or i'm going to show you in this video it, it is the uh, hot smoke quick cure method using the prog powder number one with the hot smoke. The other method, the cold smoking and the, and the prog powder number two, uh, not, not me, not yet at least. So that's what I'm doing in this video. So I didn't have any of this prog powder. I had to go online and, and actually do my own research to figure out, well, what's the difference between number one and number two? Well, number one, uh, without getting into, into a lot of details, it's got, uh, was it nitrates? Nitrites. I see. I even I get those mixed up. Uh, the prog powder number one is meant for for quick curing of like a week or two. The prog powder number two has both nitrates and nitrites, and that's meant for a more longer term cold smoking curing process. So, so I did my research and I said, well, how much do I need? And uh, so I went online and I found a link. Uh, this .edu um, URL. I'll put the link down below. But it's basically one ounce by weight of these uh, prog powder number one with uh, to 25 pounds of meat. Well, I didn't have 25 pounds of meat. I only have five pounds of meat. So I went ahead and uh, saw that they had a small recommendation of, of one level teaspoon per five pounds. And that's about what I had and that's what I went with. So just to let you know, that's the kind of the ratio for, I guess, for safety reasons. I'm not quite sure. It's all documented in that document in the link down below. So go check it out when you get a chance. In addition to the curing salts, there's other things that you can mix in with bacon. And so I went online and found uh, some various recipes and a lot of them had a lot in common. And I kind of came up with my own hybrid version of this, but it's primarily, uh, well, I put all the ingredients in the description down below. I don't want to bore you with all of that, but, but there's some maple syrup in there, some, uh, some additional salt, I think some paprika, molasses, and other things in there. It looked, looked like a pretty good mixture. So what I did is I took all those uh, ratios and put them all together and mixed them together and I, and I rubbed it all over the pork belly, all around this thing. And then I put it in a oversized, like I think it was a two and a half gallon Ziploc bag and zipped it up. But then I found out that this is going to leak probably if I leave it in one bag. So I double bagged it basically. And I threw it in my fridge and I let it uh, age in my fridge for about a week and a half, probably about nine days. And, I, and every day or maybe twice a day, I would go in the fridge and I would turn the bag because as time went on, uh, more and more liquid got pulled out of this pork belly. So I wanted to make sure that, that, uh, that each surface of the pork belly was touching that, that, that uh, brine liquid. So I turned it what, once, sometimes twice a day for like nine days. After nine days, I pulled this thing out of the fridge, gave it a rinse to rinse off the excess uh, uh, rub and brine, and salt, right? I patted it dry. Then I got my uh, Kamado up to a uh, indirect 225 degree Fahrenheit smoking temperature. Uh, added some wood chunks in there like uh, pecan and hickory. And I smoked this thing for about two hours 
until it got to an internal temperature of about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. At that point, I pulled it off and I, and I let it cool down the room temperature. And I think I even wrapped it in a, in a uh, plastic wrap and threw it in the fridge to chill it down even quicker. It's been a few hours here. Uh, once it got down to room temperature, I actually wrapped it in some plastic wrap here, double wrapped it and put it in my fridge for another hour and a half or so. So it's nice and cooled down now. So let's go ahead and unwrap this and slice them up, shall we? it this way boy does that look good all right well let's see where I cut it there's grains going this way here but going this way here and this way here it's sort of all over the place so I don't know where to cut this thing I'm gonna go ahead and just cut it right down the middle maybe huh there we go yeah that looks pretty good let's cut some slices huh that oh man oh yeah look at that that looks good oh man see how thick that stuff is I mean I cut it by hand of course so it's thicker and some it's not even sliced I don't have a slicer so uh, but I'm not complaining because <laughs> even hand cut those look pretty darn good oh boy Okay, I reconfigured my grill here for roasting temperatures, so I took out the plates and I got the coals going again, moved the plates up a little higher, so more heat can get around it. Now it's about 350 degrees. I'm going to start throwing on the bacon. Alright, let's let them cook. Alright, it uh, may not need a turning, but I'm going to have a turning bacon the whole time, so I feel like I need to turn bacon. So let's give it a turn. There we go. Oh yeah, there we go. I guess it is kind of useful to turn them. Look at that. All right, there we go. Let's let's come back in a little bit. All right, let's give us another turn. Another ten minutes here. Looks like about done here though. Oh yeah. Let's keep turning them. All right, let's take maybe a couple more minutes. All right, let's start getting them off here. And there it is, bacon ready to eat. So let's do that. Let's give it a try. <laughs> let's do it. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. This is really good. <coughs> Excuse me. Ooh. That was really good. Um, success, yeah. So my first time doing some uh, some some pork belly at home. I've been wanting to do this for years, and finally found some time to do it. It was totally worth the time. Totally worth the effort. I mean, this is delicious. You can cut it as thick as you want. Um, you can cure it with whatever uh, in ingredients and, and spices you want. And uh, you can grill it like I just did for an extra you know, level of oomph, oh, right? That rocked, uh, folks. I got to tell you, I'm doing this again, probably even a bigger pork belly. And uh, I'm going to freeze and portion it, uh, all this extra bacon. And I'm going to have uh, probably uh, many months supply of homemade bacon on hand in the, in the near future, I hope. So anyway, that was awesome. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, folks. If you're a new subscriber, please subscribe. The button down below here somewhere. And uh, other than that, I will talk to you all later. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out other videos on my YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe.